Um, all right, so in a greater understanding of um, perhaps how this is also affecting, um, like you said, the, the level of fertility, um, how do you explain that to the farmer? You just say, hey, look, you've got to cut back your fertilizer 30% in the first year, or how does that work? Because you're asking them to kind of jump off a cliff at that point. Yes and no. I mean, usually we, and if you really ask a farmer and he's really in good communication with you, they'll tell you like every farmer over fertilizes, you know, better to be safe than sorry kind of an approach, right? And I talked to a strawberry grower that had our tech on, on his field. And he told us that he says, you know, he, they kind of go, he goes by his hunch, but he knows he probably spent, you know, puts way too much fertilizer there um, that the plants don't need, you know, but he just wanted, it's better to do that than to under fertilize and then have to play catch up. That was his, his word. You know, but we usually, the way I usually approach it is like ask him, okay, are you putting a dry, a, a dry fertilizer on in the beginning? And that's the only fertilizer you're doing. Okay. Well, Maybe you don't maybe you don't cut your fertilizer, but in general, what happens is they fertilize, they put a dry fertilizer down before, and then they fertigate through the season. They put fertilizer through the irrigation through the season. And I'll say, okay, look, how often do you irrigate? And you say like three times a week. Okay, great, for three hours, let's say. And I say, good, how often if that during that irrigation cycle are you putting fertilizer in? They'll say, like, I do an hour and a half. Okay, good. So what I want you to do is Keep your same schedule and everything else, but instead of an hour and a half, I just want you to go down to an hour. So you're still getting fertilizer to the plants in the same regimen you're doing. You're just doing it for half an hour less time. Or if it's like a pivot that that yep. would mean that half, but this part's not getting anything. I might say, okay, good. So can you reduce the flow of fertilizer? So instead of running, I don't know, a ton of fertilizer, you run maybe, you know, three quarters of a ton or something like that. So you just, you, you drip it a little bit more sparsely. And most farmers are willing to do that kind of a, a test. Some farmers aren't. And those ones, we just say, okay, we're just going to run your standard program against a standard program, you know, and we're going to pay attention to it and see if that you're over fertilizing might be causing our system not to perform the way it should, you know. And then in that <laughs> scenario, though, I mean, that's, that's a difficult scenario because you have to go back to the farmer and say, hey, you fucked up. I told you to cut the fertilizer back and you didn't, and we didn't get the response. I mean, that's kind of like a, a probably a problematic issue with you guys. It can be, um, but, you know, we never point the finger at the farmer. We're, we're more like a proactive type of approach. I mean, usually what we do is we'll tell the farmer, like, okay, <clears throat> what you really need is a microbial or biological amendment, and that's going to actually reduce your need for fertilizer. So if you can... If you don't want to do 20% less with my technology, we want you to do 40%. Or, or what we'll usually do is say, okay, let's say you have a thousand acres. You have uh, your corn farmer, you have 10 pivots, right? Okay, we want to take one pivot. Good, a hey, good. And that one pivot with 20% less fertilizer, you have to understand you might be risking losing 10%. You might lose 10 bushels on that pivot, right? That's something, or is that something you're willing to risk given the size of your operation? And most farmers will say, I'm not real happy about it. Like, okay, are you willing to risk 10 bushels to get 30 bushels or 40 bushels? And they'll say, yeah. I said, okay, let's run it then. You know, it's it's every every situation is unique in that sense. So not every farmer goes for it, you know. And I, I try to my, not my best not to point the finger at the farmer and say, you messed up, you know. But, um, but I know what my technology does. We've done the university trials and, you know. This is what they did. We did a university trial where they didn't put any fertilizer on there and only used half as much water as they normally would use. Our system still had two full-size ears per stock, and the other ones had two of the little tiny, you know, half half ears, you know. But no farmer is ever gonna like not fertilize at all. But that was just an illustration of what our technology can do. Interesting.